The kids asked me to do some cheese spätzle today, so you can watch me making lunch today and um, yeah, it's very easy, enjoy it and stay to the end so you don't miss the German lesson. quick look at the ingredients that I use. I have three eggs and 250 gram of flour. I have a mix of water and milk. Um, these are the ingredients that I use for the dough. There will also be some nutmeg in it and some salt. Um, the additional ingredients are bacon. I used six slices of bacon and uh, I cut them into smaller pieces. And I have onions and this is some mozzarella, shredded mozzarella that we will use when we do the cheese spätzle. Um, I start with doing the dough. Let's move the camera over here. And I use the flour. Three eggs. And from yesterday, I still have an egg yolk that I will just throw in here too. You don't have to do that, it's just convenient for me to use this right now. Then I will add the milk and water mixture. And originally I was making my spätzle without milk water. Instead I only used the flour and eggs, lots of eggs. Um, that is the original, original um, recipe for spätzle, just eggs and flour and some salt. But I always felt like I have been eating a brick after having these spätzle. So this is a little lighter and better to eat. I personally prefer it this way. But if your German grandmother did it differently, yeah, that's the reason. I will quickly scrap the sides of the bowl. So we get all the flour into the dough. All right, that's it from here. You see the dough is like, a little bit like a pancake dough, sort of. It's not entirely fluid, but it's not very firm either. All right, so. Still some flour on the bottom. I'll quickly mix it in. All right, so what I will do now is um, I will heat my iron pan too hot and I add the bacon and this will fry just next to the rest what I'm doing and will release a lot of fat and this is what we need for our recipe at a later point of this. So now in the meantime I have boiled this water. Oops, okay. As you can see and I reduce the heat. And this is the tool that I use for my spätzle. There are different ways to make spätzle, like um, like cutting it from a um, from a wooden board. This is what our grandmothers did. Um, I did that once. You can do that. It's not too hard, but it's a lot more convenient to do it with a spätzle presse. So it's a spätzle press and I got it from Germany. You can um, buy a spätzle press like this um, at Amazon or at German Daily. Um, they are not too cheap, but they are totally worth the money. So before I use this, I will quickly dip it, whoops, 
into the water just to prevent the dough from sticking to it. And then I take oops, then I take the dough and put it in here. And you see the water is just boiling a little bit, not too much anymore. Okay, and I'm ready for the first batch. I press down, well, let me reposition it a little bit, and I stop and I change the height so that the Spätzle have different length, They're not all the same. And as you can see, most of them already are swimming, floating on top of the water. I give them a few more seconds, like another 30 seconds, and then I will take them off. Okay, so now I use this tool, I don't know the English name, in Germany we say Schaumkelle, and I add this over to my colander. And I could use the Spätzle like this as a side for uh, like a meat um, dinner or something. If I wanted to keep them hot, I could put them in a different bowl of hot water. But since I want to make case spätzle, I will just let them drip a little bit here and then move them to the next station before they go into the oven. I just noticed that my bacon is a little bit slow. So I increase the heat a little bit. Okay, and ready for the next portion. I don't fill the Spätzle Presse all the way up to the rim because otherwise I would have too many Spätzle in the water and they need some space. So I fill it like a third or a half. So the amount of spätzle that I'm making today is for like four persons. For my family this will be absolutely enough. But I know that many people here eat a lot more than we do. We're not, not big people. 
or very tiny. So you don't really eat that much. So maybe if you know that your family has a lot of good eaters, you probably want to increase the amount. And if you have too much, that's not a problem because you can freeze it, you can reheat it in the microwave. That's, uh, for a while I was making a lot of Spätzle, just the Spätzle without cheese anything. And I was just putting into the freezer bags and was just freezing them. So whenever I wanted to have some Spätzle as a side or wanted to make some taste Spätzle, I would just uh, take them out and thaw them. What I really like about my Spätzle Fresse is that I can disassemble it and just throw it into the dishwasher. It makes it very easy to clean it. I think some of the Spätzle Fresses you can buy don't have that. Bacon has started to fry nicely. My family loves bacon, especially my son. But if you are vegetarian, you can of course just heat this out. But the bacon, of course, adds a lot of good taste to the fish that's left. Last year in fall after Harvey, some of our friends got flooded, like so many people here in Houston. And we went over to a friend's house to help them with packing everything and demolition. And um, so what I did was I made a huge portion, a huge, um, huge amount of, of Käse Spätzle and brought it over there for everyone who helped to eat. They loved it. And I always try, you know, from a bad situation to make, to make a better situation, to at least add some of the good things, even if you feel like you're at a really bad place right now, which many people felt like. We got very lucky we didn't got flooded. Um, I wasn't even here, I was in California with my daughter. I couldn't get home, our flight was delayed for several days. Um, my husband and my son had, um, um, what was it called? Had a mandatory evacuation for several days. So they had to take our pets and find a hotel and stay there. But we got lucky we didn't get flooded, so I'm very grateful for that. Now the baking, since it started to fry a little late, needs a little more time. And I will just cut here and we'll get back to it once the baking has the right, um, yeah, the right consistency. consistency. So the baking has this slightly crisp um, consistency that I was going for. 
and you see a lot of fat has been created here. I will take a spoon and take some of this out. Oops. And put it in a different pan because I want to use this to fry the onions while the spätzles are in the oven. Now you might wonder if you need to have a cast iron pan for this, you don't. You can just use any sort of casserole, but I just like it like this. So I will turn, no, I will leave the heat because I can use the space in a bit for the onions. Now I add the spätzle and I mix this. And some people add some cream to it, but I feel like, you know, there's already quite a bit of fat from the bacon in here. Oops. But yeah, if you want to try it with some cream, just go ahead. I will use now half of the shredded mozzarella. In the German original recipe, we use a cheese called Emmentaler. However, we all love mozzarella in this family. And that's why we prefer this with our Spätzle. It's also easier to, to buy here. Okay, nicely mixed. Even it out a little bit. And now I sprinkle the other half of the cheese on top. And this will go into the oven for about 20 minutes. I put the oven on 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And while it's in the oven, I will, I'll just show you, I will fry the onions until they are soft and brown. And that's what we use to top the Spätzle. Spätzle are traditionally served with a green salad. So you have some vitamins as a side to this otherwise pretty vitamin-less food. And it tastes very good together. So now I will bring this into the oven. The onions look good to me now, and it is also time to take off the spätzle from the oven. So here are the cheese spätzle, sizzling, delicious, and they will be chopped with these onions. This looks delicious. And the German word for lunch is Mittagessen. Mittagessen. It's the main meal in Germany. 